Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are looking at our next Three Kingdoms uh, Lord General um, guy, chap. Uh, Kong Rong. That's right, it's Kong Rong today. Uh huh. So I, yeah, I, mean, I know nothing about him yet. We'll find out. So Kong Rong, the Master Scholar. And uh, look at that. Look, there it says the Master Scholar. It actually says his nickname. This is the first time that's happened, or his nickname is the playstyle, and that's a thing. Anyway, so Kong Rong. So oh, yes. Once again, before we get into it, all details included below are subject to change as development continues and should not be considered final. Brilliant, now we got that out of the way. Kong Rong, a brilliant politician. He was successfully promoted and became Chancellor of uh, Bai Hai. Ba Bai Hai? Maybe? Bi Hai? Bi Hai? Commandery in the uh, Qing province. So, said to be a descendant of Confucius and famed for his quick wits, dangerously sharp tongue, and elaborate literary style. Intensely focused is uh, intensely focused is on wisdom and learning. That seems a weird way to structure that sentence. All right, he believes in intelligence and analysis to win the war. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So yes, definitely scholarly, isn't he? So, born in the former Liu state, Rong was a resourceful young boy. When he grew older, Kong Rong entered the bureaucracy of the Eastern Han Dynasty. As a brilliant politician and scholar, he was successfully promoted and became Chancellor of the Bai Hai. Uh, Bai Hai? I don't go with that. Bai Hai, why not? Commandery in the Qing province, which was invaded by the Yellow Turban rebels. After a few years showing his worthiness, in, at Bai Hai, the people had become devoted to Kong Rong. They say that he's an honest man and an educated and determined leader. Kong Rong is said to be a descendant of Confucius, famed for his quick wits and elaborate literary style. Kong Rong was ranked among the seven scholars of Jiangnan, a group of representative literati. Armed with a dangerously sharp tongue, Kong Rong is near constantly opposed by Cao Cao in his political views, often coming up with inventive ways to insult him. This included trying to persuade Cao Cao that he was not powerful enough to feed Huan Chao. Despite his intellectual uh, saber rattling, Kong Rong's main focus is on wisdom and learning. He believes in intelligence and analysis to win the war. The bureaucracy of China can only succeed through the support of education. Therefore, Kong Rong concentrates on reconstruction of the city and the establishment of schools. Now, as chaos consumes China yet again, Kong Rong knows that only through knowledge and insight will prosperity prevail once more. So, how does that reflect it? I mean, how, how do you do that in a war game? I wonder. You know, read a book at the enemy. Well, uh, we'll find out. Playing as Kong Rong is a relatively peaceful experience, with him favouring a pacifist playstyle that rewards peaceful trade, as well as spreading education and knowledge. For Kong Rong, knowledge is power. His strategy is to seek out information and education to beat the enemy, not stoop to bloodshed as a first resort. Trade influence is a new system for all factions that determines how much they benefit from a trade agreement, and one that is particularly important for Kong Rong. Trade income is determined by comparing the relative trade influence of the two parties. The more trade influence you have, the more of the shared pot will flow to you as the income. In short, the more trade influence you have, the more you'll benefit from trade agreements. Interesting. I guess that would also mean, unless the shared pot changes depending on who's trading, but uh, that makes me kind of think that maybe if you're trading with someone who sucks <laughs> at trade, you'll make a ton of money. I don't know. We'll have to find out. So, as a master in the art of trade, Kong Rong has two unique ways to further boost his trade influence. By maintaining high population numbers, and with a unique deal in diplomacy that further increases the strength of his web of trade relations. This means that Kong Rong doesn't necessarily need to expand very far, and can instead ally himself with warlords with more expansive territories by forging lucrative trade agreements and using the resulting wealth to further build up his existing settlements. Large settlements mean more prestige, as well as wealth, allowing him to go to war if he must, but also enabling him to win the campaign with relatively few territories under his command if he chooses. Interesting. So, Guangxi. Ever since Liu Bei helped him defeat the Yellow Turban Rebellion, he and Kong Rong have been close allies. The two know that they can rely on each other no matter what. Kong Rong's general and grand administrator of Bai Hai, Wang... Wang... Xu? Wang Xu? I can't remember how to pronounce next now. Xu. Yeah, it's, it's SH, basically. So Wang, Wang Xu is honorable, loyal, and always willing to come to the aid of his lord. Interesting. So uh, it's just saying the same thing again there, isn't it? Yeah, so that's fine. Starting position. Kong Rong's campaign begins with him fighting against the Yellow Turbans from Bai Hai Commandery, his base of operations. After capturing Bai Hai livestock, uh, lives, 
by by high livestock farm and conquering the commandery in one swift blow, Kong Rong has a difficult choice to make. Interesting. So uh, there he is. There he is. And uh, yeah, it was up here. I think was um, Kong Su Zan. Yeah, I think he was up there. Cool. Anyway, and uh, Tao Tao's down here somewhere. Right, so, Kong Rong's campaign begins with, uh, yeah, that's the same thing. Initial Dilemma! Kong Rong's first mission is to secure and defend uh, Qing province against the Yellow Turbans. Beset upon all sides by the Yellow Turbans, a great warrior may offer his services to Kong Rong. Does, uh, does he send that officer off to seek outside aid or bring that hero into his faction to help repel the rebels? Interesting. Um, so... Uh, in each playable Warlords campaign, they will face a unique dilemma after fulfilling certain prerequisite actions. These dilemmas will position the player at a fork in the road, marking a pivotal, mo a pivotal moment in the Warlord story. One of the options available to you is, the, is a choice reflecting what happened in history, and the outcomes will follow the events of the period. The other lets you forge a tale of what might have been. Total War is all about giving players the freedom to create their own stories in some of the most exciting periods in human history, and these initial dilemmas epitomize that spirit. Kong Rong's first mission is to secure and defend Qing province against the Yellow Turbans. Beset upon all sides by the Yellow Turbans, a great warrior may offer his services to Kong Rong. Does he send that officer off to seek outside aid or bring that hero into his faction to help repel the rebels? So uh, I'm assuming that hero is uh, Tashi... Tashi... Chi? Tashi Chi? Tashi Chi? Tashi... Tashi Chi? Tashi Chi? Not sure. Tai... Tai Chi. Tai Chi Chi. Maybe. Anyway, um, again guys, pronunciation, pinch of salt, okay? It is very difficult to learn Chinese for a video game at the drop of a hat. So, um, yeah. And I have actually probably spent about two hours, um, just looking at a pronunciation guide of Chinese sounds, just trying to yeah, just cram it into my head. And uh, it's amazing how much just isn't sticking right. Um, it's just so unusual. But yeah, pinch of salt, guys. Anyway. So, um, Gong Rong's initial concern is the Yellow Turbans, who must be dealt with one way or another before he can proceed. From then on, Kong Rong's early campaign is relatively safe, but also well guarded by remnants of the crumbling Han Empire. Early expansion won't be easy, but the other major warlords are unlikely to turn against him with any great haste. So what kind of player is Kong Rong for? Kong Rong is a choice of perceptive and sharp minds. He is the perfect hero for those who focus on logic, rules, and reason while fighting for the greater good. Under his sage guidance, the Empire will uh, be will be stand will stand strong once more. If you want to pursue a strategy of going tall and a relatively peaceful playthrough, Kong Rong is one of your best choices. That does sound very interesting. That sounds um, totally unlike all other Total War games, being able to actually just build up and still meet the you know the winning criteria. I think that's really cool. Um, I just I just hope that he becomes King Kong at some point, but uh, kind of seems unlikely. But fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. Um, or would he be King Rong? Ooh, yeah. Anyway, whatever. Should be fun. So, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's Kong Rong. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. He seems interesting. Very different to uh, Gong Soon Zan, especially. Uh, similar to Cao Cao. You know, more about manipulation. But Cao Cao's more about manipulating people into fighting. He's more about manipulating people into uh, buying his wares, I suppose, um, for trade, which is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. So yeah, definitely, definitely keen to see what he's like. So yeah, that's Kong Rong. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please do comment, like, and subscribe, and be sure to tune into the next one, where we'll be looking at Liu Bei. So uh, Liu Bei will be next, so be sure to join in for that. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day, guys.